it going? It's Marcy from Silent for Second Grade, and today we're going to be diving in and talking about four strategies that can help your students with addition with regrouping. If you have ever taught second grade, you know that regrouping with addition and subtraction, it's one of the hardest concepts that our kids learn all year long. And nowadays, we know that it's not a one size fit all. So probably when you were growing up, you learned how to teach the standard, or you were taught regrouping with the standard algorithm. Well, we know now that that is not the best way because like I said, it's not a one size fit all. And we know now that every kid learns differently. And so it's so important to expose them to multiple strategies that they can use besides the standard algorithm to help them succeed with regrouping. So we're gonna dive in and get started. So one of the things I do at the beginning of any new math unit that I'm introducing is with my students, we create a whole group anchor chart. This is the one that I use for regrouping and I expose them to four different strategies. So today I'm going to share the base 10, expanded form, open number line, and the standard algorithm. I do want to express really quickly that I do not introduce all four of these strategies in one day. What I typically do is we start out with base 10, and we might spend a day or two focusing on each strategy. And each day we add a new strategy to our anchor chart. So over the course of a week or so, we are adding our new learning to our chart here. And um, by the end of our unit, it is completed. So I wanted to just kind of show you this. I know it's really big and you can't get the best view of it, but not only do I create a whole group chart, but my students create one in their journal as well. Let me show you what I mean by that and what it looks like. Inside of my addition with regrouping guided math unit, it includes those large anchor chart templates, but it also includes a mini version that students can actually put in their math journal. And what I like about this is that as we're actively completing a whole group, kids can be filling out the exact same information inside their math journal as well. So each day when we learn a new strategy and we add it to our chart, they are also creating a mini version of the same example inside of their math journal so that we always have, or so that they always have it to refer back on. So the first strategy that I always introduce is base 10 and let me show you how to do it. So before you dive in to teaching regrouping, you need to make sure that your students have a strong understanding of place value. That's why place value is one of the very first units taught in second grade and they need to have that strong understanding of place value in order to understand the why before the how and how regrouping works. So I always introduce, the first strategy that I introduce with regrouping is the base 10 strategy where we use base 10 blocks. So I'm gonna show you how you can model this strategy with your students. So this is the place value work mat that I use with my students, it can also be found in my edition with regrouping unit. You do not have to have a work mat like this. You can easily use just a plain sheet of paper or a standard place value chart. So let's say that our edition problem is 66 plus 48. Now, I'm gonna model this actually drawing base 10 blocks just because I don't have physical base 10 blocks on hand with me right now. But in the beginning, I would definitely use real base 10 blocks or manipulatives to, so that kids can actually physically move and model the problem with their base 10 blocks. But it's also very important for them to learn to draw it out as well. So in this example, I am going to be drawing out the base 10 blocks. So we have 66 plus 48. 
So they are going to build the first add-in, which would be 66 with base 10 blocks. You can also have them draw it out like I am gonna do now. So they would draw or build six tens and six ones. Then we're gonna build the second add-in, which would be 48. When we regroup, or when we're adding multi-digit numbers, it's very important to stress that you always start with the ones place first. So they are going to count and add their ones. So we've got six plus eight equals 14. Now, 14 is more than 10, so we know that we have to regroup. Or I would express to your students, okay, we have 14, that's too, too many. Can we make a trade? And we can, because we know that 10 ones is the same thing as one 10 block. So what they're gonna do is you can either have them physically move 10 ones blocks, or if they're drawing it out, I would have them circle. So I've got six here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I need four more. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So these are what they are going to regroup. They're going to circle it. I would have them mark those out. And now we have four ones left. One, two, three, four. They need to know that they, because they took those 10 ones away, they need to replace it with a 10s block. So it doesn't matter where they put it. So they regrouped, they traded 10 ones for a 10s block. Now they can count the 10s to solve for the sum. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They have 11 tens and four ones, so their answer for 66 plus 48 is 114. And then down at the bottom, you could even have them write the full sentence. So that is how you model the base 10 strategy. The next strategy that I'm gonna show you is the expanded form strategy. What I really like about the expanded form strategy is that it takes the regrouping aspect actually out of the problem. And what I've noticed is that this is actually a very popular strategy that students use once they get the hang of it. But it does require, again, a very strong understanding of place value and expanded form. So let me show you how that would work. We're going to use the same problem from before. We're going to use 66 plus 48. Now, you do not have to have this work mat that I have. Kids can easily do this on a plain whiteboard or a piece of notebook paper. So I'm going to write the problem right here. I'm going to write 66 plus 48. And what you want to have kids do is use their place value knowledge to expand both add-ins. So they're gonna expand the number 66, which would be 60 plus six. Then they're gonna expand the number 40 plus eight. So once they have their two numbers expanded, then they are actually going to write a plus sign and draw their, um, then they are going to draw their equation bar. Now, what I have kids do, and I start this from the beginning because you can use this strategy for subtraction with regrouping as well. I actually have them circle this plus sign right here to let them know that they are going to be adding these numbers rather than subtracting. When we add multi-digit numbers, we still always start with the ones place first. So we have six plus eight equals 14, plus 
zero plus zero is zero. Six plus four equals 10. So now we have 100 plus 14. So you can see it is one extra step, but it's taking that regrouping aspect away. And so then they could solve for the sum. They might choose to come over here and write the equation vertically, or they might can solve it mentally, but 100 plus 14 equals 114. And that is how you use the expanded form strategy for regrouping. Again, this is one of my favorite ones, and it's actually one of the most common ones that I have seen with my students. Once they get past the concrete part of it with using base 10 blocks and we're transitioning into more of that abstract learning, this strategy is a really good transitioning strategy for them. So I highly, highly recommend this one. The next strategy I'm going to share is how to add addition with regrouping on an open number line. This is one of the more challenging strategies, but it's actually highly beneficial. They just need a really strong understanding in skip counting. This is definitely more of an abstract type strategy, but I do find that a lot of kids use it once they get the hang of it. So let me model it for you. This is the work mat that I use. And again, like any of the other strategies that I have shown you today, you do not have to have this work mat and you do not have to have this task card that I'm gonna be using this example with. But if you are interested, again, all of this can be found in my addition with regrouping unit. So when introducing this strategy, I like to start out with a series of questions that's going to help guide their thinking. So in this example, we have 79 plus 56. They are going to draw an open number line on their whiteboard or on a piece of paper. Maybe they're working in their math journal. So the first question I ask them is what number goes at the start of your number line? And what I like to tell my students is that it doesn't matter if they start with 79 or if they start with 56 because they should know by now that when you flip-flop the add-ins, your sum is still the same. So it really doesn't matter, but I like to tell them to write the largest add-in first. So it doesn't matter the order of the problem, write the largest add-in first. That way, they the, the number that they're modeling on the number line, it's the smaller one, and so it's just requires less room. So what number goes at the start of your number line? 79, so I would have them write that out. Then what we do is we call the tens hops and the ones skips because a hop is bigger than a skip. And when we get into adding hundreds and using this strategy, we call the hundreds leaps. So hundred leaps, Tens hops, ones skips. So how many tens hops do you need to count? Well, what number is in our tens place in 56? Five. How many one skips do we need to count? Six. So once we have that information figured out, then we're gonna go ahead and write 79 at the beginning and start of our open number line. We need 10 hops. This is where skip counting and having that strong understanding of skip counting really comes into play. So we're gonna start here with 79 and they are gonna draw five tens hops. If they do have a strong understanding, I would have them count out loud. So 79, 89, 99, 109, 119, 129. If they cannot mentally count in their head, there's two things that you can do. You can have them write plus 10 above each one if you wanted to. You do not have to have them do this, but I do down here at the bottom, I would have them write 89, 
99, 109, 119, 129. Okay, so we did our 10s hops. Now we need six ones skips. And these are going to be smaller skips along the number, the open number line. So I'm going to draw one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm actually going to erase this because the marker that I'm using, let me make this a little smaller. So if there's space, you could have them put plus one above each one. You could have them write out. So 129, 130, 131. And just because the marker that I'm using, um, it makes my numbers fatter. So I'm actually just going to count out loud. So 129, 130, 131, 132, 133, 134, 135. So they know that the sum of 79 plus 56 is 135. And that is how you add on an open number line. Then the last strategy that I am gonna show you guys is the standard algorithm which is probably the strategy that you're most familiar with, and it's probably how you were taught growing up. So this is going to also be the strategy that parents recognize the most. So let me show you how it works. When teaching your students the standard algorithm, we want to teach them that it's important to line their problem up vertically. So I'm gonna use this same example from earlier, 66 plus 48. And I'm actually going to move this off to the side here. 66 plus 48. We want to stretch the importance of lining the ones and the tens up whenever we are writing vertically. So one thing that I do is I teach them to actually, especially when first starting out, I teach them to circle or even highlight the ones place first. This is showing that these are the numbers that they need to add first. So they're going to add the ones place, six plus eight is 14. If it's 10 or more, we carry next door. So my four is going to go down to the ones place and I'm gonna regroup and carry my one and put it above the tens place. Then I'm going to add one plus six equals seven, seven plus four equals 11. So my answer is 114. So there you have it. Those are four strategies that you can use to teach addition with regrouping with your students. If you are looking for additional ideas and resources, I have linked in the description of this video I have linked my blog post that kind of goes more in depth into these four strategies. And you'll also find the link to my second grade guided math edition with regrouping unit. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. You guys have a blessed one. Bye.